It's Louisville's New Rock Alternative, Alt 1051. It is PK, and with me, I got Joe, a.k.a. Nothing Nowhere. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good to be back. I know. We were just saying, uh, the last time that uh, you were here in Louisville, last time that I saw you was uh, right in the middle of the pandemic, and, you know, I, I think you were playing with All Time Low, and everybody was masked up. You know, everybody in the venue was masked up. It was uh, definitely a, a different kind of atmosphere than it is here at Louder Than Life. So many people, and maybe like one or two masks. <laughs> so it's definitely a, a different vibe, but... Uh, uh, looking forward to uh, checking out your set in just a little bit, and uh, you know everything is kind of kind of rushed through and uh, hit everything, and uh, you know that's the uh, the boogie of festivals. But I want to talk about the uh, new album. All right, so it's been out for a hot second here, right? You know, so now this album, you had a ton of features on it, as opposed to you go back. You know, very minimal features. What about this album inspired you to be like, you know what, I want to start collaborating with, you know, more people? Um, honestly, I just, since it was a heavier album and sort of alternative, uh, I grew up in that space listening to all these bands. And uh, honestly, it was kind of selfishly, I just wanted to make a record with all of my idols and people that I, that I look up to. And, uh, you know, thankfully, like, I'm in a position where, I could kind of hit them up and they'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll hop on it, you know? So it, yeah. it was really organic. Yeah, for sure. And I, that was kind of the thing that, you know, I was I was looking at the list and everything, and it's like, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that, you know, you would be able to, to kind of connect with these artists, you know, kind of growing up and everything. But, you know, when you, when you do have those relationships and you start collaborating together, how does that impact, you know, your overall mindset when you're, you know, either writing or, you know, producing, whatever, whatever it is that you're working on, how does that collaboration really kind of change your, you know, uh, your direction of what you're doing yeah I think it just gets me out of my own head because um, with Nothing Nowhere it's been such a, a one man pursuit for so long and collaboration has been awesome because it reminds me of when I was growing up skateboarding and snowboarding you know when you skateboard or snowboard by yourself you're less likely to try new things and really take risks but yeah. if you're with a group of kids um, you know you're like yeah I'm gonna jump off this cliff because they all did it you know what I mean yeah. so it's kind of the same when you're in the studio like um, having all these amazing artists just push you to be your, the best version of yourself I feel like at the end like the song is better because of it yeah, for sure. I mean, how, how often was that happening where, you know, you'd be doing something and then somebody else would be like, be like, no, come on, like, re really, come push it, come on, try that. Yeah. Or, you know, you have someone like like Will Ramos, who's amazing at screaming, or, uh, yeah. you know, Freddie Dredd, who's an amazing rapper, and you're like, okay, I got to step it up, you know? <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, I, there is that element of like, you know, it uh, it kind of brings out the uh, the best of you and all of those different aspects. But uh, I mean, it's really cool to see. I mean, the entire list of uh, of different artists that are on there between you know working with Silverstein, like you said, with Will Ramos. I mean, Under Oath is there. Pete Wentz. I mean, like it, it's so many like different sounds that all kind of come together. And you know, that's really kind of in your wheelhouse of what you do. I mean, you tend to. Uh, not really be defined by a particular sound so like how do you how do you kind of approach things from that mentality where it's like you know do you do you have in mind like okay well this one is a little more hip-hop this one's a little more rock this one's you know heavier or lighter like how does that you know how does that thought process kind of impact the entire album making process for you yeah I've, I've been thinking about this a lot more lately um when i started nothing nowhere you know kind of full-time in 2015 i had this ethos of like i'm not going to be chained down by genres i'm not going to be restricted by you know what i think it should sound like and you know i don't know if it was for better or for worse maybe i shot myself in the foot by not you know doing the similar thing and i just can't help myself you know what i mean you know you go from a record like trauma factory we had some pop songs on there and now with void eternal it's just a complete shift into the heavy landscape with breakdowns yeah. and screaming i just can't help myself you know a lot of people are like you should make a side project for this and i'm like nah i'm just gonna put it out under nothing nowhere yeah i mean it's still you so you know it's just uh, it's a different side of you so um i do want to ask you know with 
When it comes to making your set list for shows, you know, especially like Louder Than Life in festival scenes, like it's a little bit of a different beast. You know, you have only so much time. It's an entire crowd of people that, you know, you, you hope a decent amount know, but you're definitely in front of people that may be discovering you for the first time. But when you think about a standard headlining show for you and you're putting that set list together, you have some staple songs that you put in that are always making the cut, some new songs that you want to try out. What's the one song that you wish you could put into a set list, but it just, it never makes the cut? It's always one of those first songs that's like, no, we, it, either it's too long or it's too complex. Like, what's the one song you wish you could play, but you just never get the chance to? This is so funny because with this tour that we've been doing, uh, we initially ended with a song called Barely Bleeding, which was the ender to my record Trauma Factory. And uh, this is the third tour where I've tried putting it in. But for some reason, I don't know why I did it to myself, but the chorus is so unbelievably high that being in the studio and being on tour is different. You know what I mean? I can't do it for 40 nights in a row. And this is just tour. I'm just like, we're going to do it this time. We're going to do it. Two shows in, we're like, nah, we can't do it. <laughs> but, you know, maybe next time we'll try it and we'll drop it down a couple of keys and be like, yeah, this is it, you know? I mean, I think that's going to be uh, one of the uh, the special ones where it's like, hey, like last show of the tour, like maybe we'll give it a try or pro probably first first show of the tour where you can actually you can nail it and then be like, all right, we're done. We're <laughs> retiring for a bit. But uh, I dude, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm looking forward to everything here at Louder Than Life. Uh, it's great to have you back in Louisville and, you know, hopefully we'll have you back again very, very soon. Looking forward to uh, everything that's coming up for you. But uh, always a pleasure.